Today we are making vegan French bread pizza. This is quicker to make than regular pizza and to be honest I actually think it tastes better. I had it the other day and it's it's so good man. This because the the edges of the bread get kind of crunchy. Man, it's it's so delicious and it's super quick to make. So let's go. First off, we're just chopping it into two halves and we're just gonna give it a little press down like this. The ideal type of bread for this is actually kind of cheap supermarket bread um, because it squashes down a bit better and the, the kind of nice traditional crispy, crispy bread is a little bit drier and it has lots of holes in so it won't uh, won't be as good for adding toppings to and it will just it will end up a bit too dry and crunchy so we've squished that down give this one a squish and the reason we're squishing it is because the flatter it is the more toppings we can fit on top so that's the reasoning behind that so what we're going to do now is we're going to warm up some margarine or this is some sunflower spread whatever you fancy and we're going to stick about two tablespoons worth in here so that's probably about that ah, cool there we go and we're also going to add in some olive oil we put this on a medium high heat and probably a couple tablespoons of oil. We want plenty. Lovely. There we go. So we'll let that start to heat up. So let's clear the chopping board quickly. I thought I'd got all my ingredients out ready and prepared, but I realized I forgot the garlic because this is in fact a garlic bread pizza just to take it to the next level and this is inspired by a recipe from Kenji Lopez he did a, a non-vegan version but we're gonna make a vegan version of this garlic bread French cheesy pizza Cool. Yeah, it's a it's a long name. There's a lot of things involved in it, but it's still pretty quick to make. I made it yesterday, and yeah, I was surprised how easy it was. So I'm not a professional chef or anything at all. I just follow recipes and sometimes improvise recipes if I don't have the right ingredients. But that's with this channel. I want to bring in recipes and as I learn and improve my own cooking skills I want to share that with you guys so you can learn along the way and I can help cultivate is that the right word cultivate yeah I guess I'm cultivating my cooking skills and improving them and curate that's what I actually meant to say I can kind of curate recipes find cool vegan recipes or ways to adapt non-vegan recipes to be vegan and bring them together onto this channel so you guys can enjoy them as well and I really enjoyed the process of researching this recipe I did it a bit more in depth than I have been before and it was nice I like it I like doing a bit more due, di due, due diligence Jeez, I'm not very articulate this video so we're well while this has started to get get heated up nicely, we're going to add in a few bits of oregano and some chili flakes, just depending on how spicy you want it to be. I've put olive oil and margarine in there, or the sunflower spread, whatever you want to call it. The reason I've done that is, well, first off, there's a common myth. Let's squish these kind of makes it easier to chop 
there's a common myth that you can add olive oil to butter and that will mean that you can cook at a higher temperature and you won't have to worry about the butter burning because the butter has a much a lower burning point but actually it has a pretty much the same burning point as olive oil so it, that is a myth which I found out whilst researching the video however I think it just tastes a lot nicer it's got like a more rich complex flavor when you add in the the butter and the olive oil so that's what I'm doing and I recommend but you can use either one or the other and it will turn out good as well right that's enough chopping let's stick that in there oh I'm enjoying this video so far I actually already filmed a version of this video but it was just a bit chaotic and I hadn't really planned it out enough and I thought it'd be nice to actually make sure it's um, I'm making it the best video it can be and so that it's something that really is uh, is good to watch and gives you guys some good information oh yeah along with this let's stick just a little bit of salt in as well so there we go cool and let's turn on the oven as well so we want it on about 220 that's celsius or if you're in uh if you're in america or whatever you're using fahrenheit that's about 425 fahrenheit so nice and hot so we can see it's still only been a maybe 60 90 seconds but the the garlic doesn't take long to start burning and or at least start browning so i think that's ready all right stick it on here and what we're gonna do we can leave that hob on actually because we're still gonna be using it what we can do is where should i put this all right let's leave it there so we can grab ourselves a spoon we can use this one from earlier and we're just going to spoon over our lovely garlic mixture and we're only using half of this for now so we're gonna add the rest of it is gonna go in with our tomatoey sauce oh I'm getting hungry now just because I, I remember how good this tasted when I made it yesterday and oh man yeah everything's going better as well we've got this bread is better than the bread we had before and yeah this this is gonna be awesome i'm so happy with the re this recipe i'm definitely gonna end up doing it many more times in my life because it's just it's super quick easy tastes so good and yeah i love it i think i did put a lot of olive oil and butter in so yeah we just want to give it a good covering there and right we can stick this now back onto the heat and quickly we're gonna add in right let's see that's gonna i'm just gonna grab a little uh pot there we go something that i can put my implements in so quickly we need to add in some tomatoes before that starts to burn again so these in so these are cherry tinned cherry tomatoes that i've started getting recently and they taste so good like these are they're amazing they've got a really nice sweet flavor to them uh, let's give these a squish yeah they've got a really nice sweet flavor to them and i like having a little bit of the skins and seeds just feels more fresh yeah but you can use passata or chopped tomatoes there we go there's our tomato sauce that's going to get a little bit of the water evaporated and become thicker and richer 
So we've got our garlic bread here and we're gonna add a layer of cheese. So that'll mean that this bit doesn't burn too much um, so we're gonna put it in a couple of times. But one of the, the cool things with adding in the cheese is that, let's put these right next, yeah. Uh, is that when we add the sauce on, it doesn't absorb as much into the bread. If you just add the, the sauce straight onto the bread, it just really absorbs it and gets soggy. And that's one of the, the common problems with like regular pizza bread. Uh, like French bread pizza is what I meant to say. So, yeah. Another reason is that doing it this way, we end up getting two layers of cheese. So the more cheese, the better for in all situations, I think. And cheese that I'm using is this mature cheddar vegan cheese. But as a vegan, it's hard to really be too picky with cheese. Just got to try and find whatever you can get locally that melts as well as possible, use that. Hopefully, well, definitely I can see there's ranges are expanding and there's more choice, but still for vegan cheese, it's still not quite as, uh, I think we've got a way to go until we get lots, a wide variety of good vegan cheese. Anyway, we'll stick these in, in the middle shelf, and we're gonna leave that for about five minutes. Okay, so the tomato sauce has started to reduce down very nicely and let's have a quick check on our garlic bread see how it's doing it's been about five minutes or so cool. there we go so it's melting a bit but like i said this cheese isn't really isn't perfect but it doesn't matter it's going to be delicious anyway right we'll turn that off now and we can just start adding over this lovely tomato sauce Honestly, making tomato sauce like this is so good as well. I'm going to start doing this with pasta or whatever. So, I'm going to go. Yeah, just the the fact that the the tomatoes are still a little bit whole just makes it so much juicier, and I don't know, it feels more, feels fresher, feels a bit more natural having actual bits of of tomato rather than just a passata or something like that where it's all blended i think it makes it a lot nicer so oh man i'm getting hungry already yeah i really hope if you're watching this i really hope you do either you're making this now or i hope that you do give this recipe a try because it's so nice use a little bit less oil and butter than i did because i think i went a bit overboard on this but apart from that this is all all good all right we want to make sure we get a nice solid covering so that we don't have bits of bread exposed right let's get the last little bit Oh, mate, this looks so good. All right, we'll stick over some cheese. That's the next layer. And we've got some really cool toppings. I'm gonna, well, I can start telling you about them now. So we've got the, well, my, what I like for something like this is something kind of meaty and something fresh. I think that's a good combination of flavors. Don't need to have five different things on top. I think that's just, bit overkill for a simple meal like this. So for the meaty thing, we've got this, it's seitan, which I made the other day, but I, I found, basically, I ended up putting the lid on and I also think added a bit too much water. So it didn't turn out how I expected, but it ended up being much more tender than regular seitan. So I wanna, practice it again, make sure I can repeat it and show you guys how to make that because it's so nice. It's really tender. Right, we're gonna need some more cheese. Luckily, I've got some here. So it's super tender. And what I did is 
Actually, I'll, I, well, I squeezed, I was gonna not tell you and make you watch the other video, but I'll tell you now. So the, I kind of just squeezed out the water that was in it and then added some soy sauce on top and some vinegar. And man, it was such a good combination. It absorbed all of that flavor, man. So nice. So I'm definitely going to make a video showing how to make it because I'm so happy with the discovery. Right. Loads of cheese on that. So yeah, we're going to grab these little bits of seitan and you can see it's like quite, quite tender. Oh, lovely. And for the fresh part of the pizza, we're going to have some capers. And yeah, man, I love capers. So good. I've only started having them recently, but I'm a big fan of them. And you can, maybe something like jalapenos would work well. Um, just, just something fresh, anything fresh you want to put on a pizza. That does include pineapple. So, but for something like this, I think capers or jalapenos, that's a good option. Right, there we go. Let's do another little bit there, and another little bit. Oh, mate, I'm getting so hungry looking at this. It looks so good. Right, I'm gonna keep adding a load of these capers on. Yeah, that is a lot of capers, but it's all good. All right. Mmm. Love it. Right, I'm gonna stick these back in. Give them a bit of space. I'm gonna stick these back in for about five to 10 minutes. Obviously it's gonna depend a bit on your oven, how well you want it done and the sort of cheese that you're using. So just keep an eye on it. It's been about seven minutes. If you're wondering where the pan's gone, I ended up eating all of the sauce while I was waiting. And I take back what I said about putting in all of the oil and spread. I loved it. So anyway, let's, Excuse me. Let's check on the pizza. I had a little peek through the door, so I think it should be ready now. Yep, there we go. Oh, dude, this looks so good. All right, you gotta have quick fingers. Let's go. All right, one down. Ah. That's it. Let's go. Oh, get some meat as well. All right, it's gone crispy on the outside. Mmm. Mate, this is the best. So, I mean, first off, just look at how good that looks. And let's quickly chop it up. So we'll do uh, one down the middle, like this. I found this is a, the best way to chop it. If you chop it down there and then Go like that. Then you get these little batons, which are perfect size for eating. Let's try our first proper bite. There we go. So let's make sure we get a bit of meat, a bit of caper, cheese, tomato. Oh, all right, let's have a bite. Mmm. Honestly, the crunch of the bread makes it so nice. Love the flavor of the garlic running through. Fresh little bits of capers, loads of cheese, very rich tomatoey sauce. The chewy, slightly salty meat because it's absorbed the soy sauce that it was soaked in. Man, this is an absolute winner. So, if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like so that more people can find it. Thanks for watching all the way through. I appreciate it. I hope you guys make this and enjoy it. And I will see you in the next video. Peace.